comments. In this video, I will be addressing your comments, criticisms, compliments, questions. What energy you bring here, I will return to you with the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, the balance of the honor and the grace, and the possession of peace and neutrality. Keep in mind, no one is twisting your arm to be here, so keep that in mind. If you are going to make claims or if you are choosing to not read the terms and conditions of the comments field, well then you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Now, I don't ever take anything personally here. I recommend that you do the same. What I'm saying in this comments video is a critique based upon using the lens of correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar i.e. quantum grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. Keep that in mind. Everything I say is pretty much through that lens. So with that in mind, let's get to it. Our first comment comes from member Yadon Yashar. Thank you very much for your membership. And they say, the birth certificate is a stranger-owned life insurance policy. Folks, I realize there's no R in the word certificate. I draw your attention to an old cartoon, well, not old, old, but maybe old by most young folks' standards. It's a cartoon called Chowder. And in that cartoon, there was a chef who pronounced the word certificate like I just did, certificate. And I just like the way it sounds, the way it rolls off the tongue, so I adopted that pronunciation of it. And whenever I say the word, that's how I say it. That's why I said it the way I said it. But I know it's not correct. Verbally, you know, phonetically. There is no R in certificate. I just like the way it rolls off the tongue. So that's why. Nothing to do with what we're doing here. Just thought I'd uh, give you that little digression. So stranger owned life insurance, Stoli. Hmm. That sounds like a vodka. Is a policy someone, usually an investor, buys on another person with whom they don't have an existing relationship. The purchaser is buying life insurance as an investment rather than because they would suffer from the other person's death. Because of this uncomfortable arrangement, stoley policies are generally illegal. Yadon, I was with you up until that last part right there. I was completely with you. I could cognize what you were what you were saying, what you're sharing. But the last part, stoley policies are generally illegal. What does that mean generally illegal? Either something is legal or it's not legal. The only way something illegal can become legal is if a license is produced for it, such as in the legal system in the context in the framework of that system. If you do not have a driving license, you are operating a vehicle illegally. If you're driving a motor vehicle and you do not have a fiction driving license, now you're doing something illegal. But if you get the license, now all of a sudden it's legal. It's basically that condition of being illegal or legal is changed or modified by the fee for freight. So... That's the only way I can see something being legal or illegal. And again, that's part of the fiction system, not part of correct sentence structure communication policy syntax grammar. So that's why my personal position on the birth certificate or certificate of live birth or whatever it is you want to call it, I had nothing to do with the contract. I wasn't old enough to authorize it. Someone else did. That's someone else's contract, not mine. So therefore, I have nothing to do with it, nor do I want anything to do with it. And whatever is happening with it literally has nothing to do with me. Uh, because my correct name is Colin Jason I from Matthew Colin Glass, and I am a live life claimant. I did a little short coolie on it to this in the short section, which I highly recommend that you folks out there check out my shorts. It helps the growth of the channel, and I do put them out pretty frequently, actually. But this Passion Fields is actually colon Spencer-David-Miller 
colon space feel. The, uh, the individual that's been harassing me via email and comments and things like that over the last few months. An individual that I broke bulk with, when I got an email from them a few months ago, I put up a post on Instagram and tagged them in it, Passion Fields. It's their company. He is Passion Fields. All right. And I tagged him in it because that's his Instagram profile so that he would see it and he would stop harassing me. I made it public. And then weeks and weeks later, he sends me a message. Why did you post a company in a personal video? Who are you even? Sounds like you're a real psycho with mommy issues. If I had as much time as a psycho like you, the typical North American, I would convey to you and your 29 followers cult members how big of a fraud you are. Leave this company alone and get a life you want to be mama's boy. Now this is the same individual that once told me that he wanted the judges and the Vasilis and the fiction system to run away when they saw him coming. He wanted them to fear him. That's the psychology of a bully. And as you can see here, that's exactly what we're dealing with. Name calling, trying to psychoanalyze. Um, not only that, but he also uh, psychoanalyzed all the typical North Americans. So Canadians and individuals from the United States are uh, typically psychotic, I guess, according to this fellow. I'm putting this here, even though I already gave Cooley on it to it, I'm just putting it here just to shed more light on the issue. And I am going to make a video where I show all of his emails and all of my responses, and I show all of the messages and things like that that show the uh, timeline of his behavior and how gradually the way he conducts himself changes. He starts off very nice, seemingly humble, seemingly kind, astute, and then it gradually de degenerates into what you see here. Very uh, aggressive, confrontational, name-calling, defensive, angry. So, for those of you out there that are interested in the psychology of correct sentence structure and why it will not work for you if you do not get closure on it and you do not have correct psychology, the video I'm going to publish with our correspondence will definitely be of great enlightenment and elucidation for you. Next comment comes from xrpo systems and they say how are you supposed to do a live life claim if you have no peers that seek life well my initial coolie on it to that would be i guess it might be a good idea to find some new peers who have the same goals as you do and that doesn't necessarily have to be in your physical vicinity XRPO's systems. You can do it online. I'm sure there are correct sentence structure groups out there, quantum grammar groups or posts where you can reach out and connect with different folks all over the earth who are interested in this. And you can, wit you can get witnesses that way. If you do a video communication with them, you can witness them so that you know they are who they say they are. You see them, you hear them, uh, you're witnessing them. That's how witnessing can be done if you can't meet face-to-face. -face. And then, of course, you would do the postal mechanics and mail them your live life claim so that they may autograph on it as a witness, as a genuine witness. Next comment comes from Trenton Allen, and they say, Prove etymology. Etymology is a vowel and two consonants. Consonants. I think they mean consonants. Means no contract in correct sentence structure. I can't prove a fiction, but NA and means not applicable on any form or invoice. Me is 
obvious. What? Conspicuous is a master spell. Blatantly right in your face. Conspicuous is a master spell. What is I'm I'm lost, folks. I apologize. I'm lost. I have no idea what this what this individual is conveying here. Conspicuous. So conspicuous uh, calm, which means together. Mm-hmm. And then spicare to look at S P E K to observe. So that's what conspicuous means. Conspicuous means together with the contract of observing something, of looking at something. The beginning is my way of saying Russell is not on your level. Much respect. Well, I appreciate any positive sentiments there, but I really don't get how you're conveying it. So I did respond to that last comment in the comments field here, which I'm going to share with you, because I feel like I already did cover this in another video, but we'll go over it again. It said your, your response regarding etymology is typical of a beginner, so I will utilize honor and grace. You are attempting to say what is or isn't correct with grammar, yet you yourself do not speak or use correct grammar. Is your volition to be straightforward and clear, or are you here to confuse and play games? Which... I guess in hindsight, I'm looking at this as perhaps maybe construed as being a little bit harsh. Well, what I'm bringing focus to is the way that they worded this comment. Yes, we know etymology is a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word. The word itself is no contract. We know that. All right. But we also know what it means. When I say use an etymology dictionary, you know what I mean. So if we're here to be understood, if we're here to contract, if we're here with the balance of the honor and the grace, that is not an issue for anyone. Nowhere in any of my correct sentence structure contracts do I use the word etymology. It is not in my dictionary because I know it's no contract. But because we're using plain, simple English, it's... Over 50% of the words we use in plain, simple English are no contract. So what I'm basically saying to them is, uh, please be clear. Don't use word games. Don't use strange, inconsistent uh, use of quotations or rounded brackets or anything like that. Just say what you got to say, bro. So anyways... After I said that, they decided to say, I will never respond again. I apologize if I've offended you in any way, sir. Thank you. Now, I'm not sure if them using the word sir was meant to be some sort of low-key diss or insult because they've never, ever, ever used that word in relation to me before. And I also know sir is actually a term of subordination Sir, as you are, it's under something. Sub, sir. So that might be a low key diss, I don't know. But this response is uh, basically what I would consider to be a knee jerk response, being that this is my channel. And if you come here, you have to observe the terms and conditions of the comments field. And all of your comments are open to criticism because I am a correct sentence structure tutor, so I'm automatically going to bring it back to that space, which I did here. They don't want to talk about, Trent doesn't want to talk about his lack of closure in the grammar. He doesn't want to do that. He's here for some other reason. And I don't think the reason is to learn correct sentence structure. Like, folks, I think he means well. He is basically trying to say that he knows that I know more than Russell or, or whatever. But how does he know that when he himself doesn't know the grammar? How can he even make that type of judgment or conclusion if he can't even put together a correct sentence structure? Next comment comes from Michelle Cardenas. And they say, OMG Entertainment, it is. Do we give them a break because they 
probably jabbed and can't help it or what. I enjoy learning either way. Now, this individual did come on later on and apologize for not reading terms and conditions of the comments field with humility. You know, that's a huge step in the psychology of learning quantum grammar is to have that type of humility. Because this, I mean, they're kind of casting aspersions, making assumptions. Um, but anyway, the whole point of me commenting on this is that this person realized that they were violating the terms and conditions and acknowledged it. And that's huge. Next comment comes from Razvan, longtime viewer and member. And they say, do you know if David's decision to publish his address and phone number got him any trolls? In general, he is still the only one I've seen doing that. By the way, I've never even been inside an automatic transmission car and in my 19 years of driving. Do I know if David's decision to publish this got him in trolls? I don't, I have no idea if they did or didn't. I've never heard any stories of it, of him getting trolls or anything like that. I mean, I'm sure he had to have had one or two. But as far as I know, nothing, nothing like that ever happened. Based upon my conversations with the man personally and also with the people around him. And yes, he is the only one that did that. After his death, uh, Russell J. Gould immediately began withdrawing from the public very gradually. And now, as far as I know, you have to go through his Russell's handler or whatever she is, his secretary his uh, liaison, Rachel Dara Prince, to even get a message to him. So, very, very different than uh, the open book style of David. Next comment comes from Niles Rivers, and they say, For the climate who was born in the USA, what climate would write in space territory? Colon, think, hyphen, you, period. I think they mean claimant, and uh, as far as their correct sentence structure goes at the end there, Niles, I would highly recommend not using non-tangible contract words in your compound facts. Y-O-U is a non-tangible contract word. That's why I write things like colon thankfulness, period. Because if you're just going to put a colon and then type out a fiction babble type of terminology or sentence, then why are you using correct sentence structure? That's the way I look at it. So in answer to your question, you can write whatever you want to in there. It's completely up to you. But I myself eliminate all of that by simply writing out the GPS location. Put out the GPS location, you don't have to put down you know, country, town, city, zip codes. You don't have to put any of that if you just put the GPS, if you know how to do that. Next comment comes from For the Claimant, and they say, Hello, Jason. Many of the answers I gave to the questions you asked in this live stream were difficult to convey. Reason being the limitation on space to write a response. I have used correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar on numerous occasions to stop trespass, learning more from every experience. My early performances were not correct. I have made amendments constantly. I took a lot from David Wynn Miller, then found the answers I couldn't find in David's seminars were given closure on this channel. For example, closure on every grammar mechanic. I have had pleasant interactions with my local constabulary who have actually respected the terms and conditions at my domicile location, refusing to assist corporate entities. Many things have happened that encourage me to continue and gain closure. Thanks for everything. I will contact you in the next week as soon as I'm free and schedule a 15-minute test and face-to-face -face conversation. All the best, Jason. James Alexander Jennings. Well, that's awesome, James. That's awesome uh, to read about that. Your comment on the constabulary with my experience 
is very rare, very rare um, to someone describe their interactions with the fiction system as pleasant. So you're very fortunate for that, for sure. Very, very fortunate. Most folks don't have that experience. Um, you contact me the next week as soon as you're free. Well, I'm sorry to hear that you're not free. I hope you're not in prison or anything. Uh, but yeah, feel free to reach out to me and uh, we'll set something up. Thank you for the comment and for the membership. Next one comes from Strel whatever. They say, worst legal advice I have ever heard. And then I say, joke's on you. It's not legal advice. And then they say, you are literally telling people when and when not to hire a lawyer based on this quantum grammar con. That can be a felony. And then I say, I, ne I literally never said anything of the sort. Quantum grammar is 100% successful when one knows how to use it. In any case, are you actually going to do anything other than continue to lie and troll? So what happened with those individuals? They actually responded back basically saying that they love... They obviously, I guess, say have something to do with the fiction courts because they say they love tearing people apart like me in court. They said that when they see full colons written out in a name, they basically do this and they have fun ripping apart people that use full colons in their names in court. So that tells you a lot about whoever this individual is. Basic fiction system... Uh, rhetoric, you know, basic fiction, fiction system attitudes. They enjoy hurting people. Kind of like, you know, in another sense, kind of like that Spencer David Miller field guy. You know, he wants them to fear him when he comes in. This guy kind of has that same attitude or girl, whatever, you know, they don't even, <laughs> they don't even credential themselves. So you can't really take them seriously. And they come in with a threat. That can be a felony. Like, that's supposed to scare me. That's why I said, are you actually going to do anything other than to continue to lie and troll? Like, bro, are you going to do something? Pull up. If not, pull off. This next set of comments comes from TikTok, from Sonia Marie. And this, this had to do with a video I posted about Mark Sean Christopher, where Mark Sean Christopher basically tells the viewers that he thinks the people in the United Kingdom and in North America are stupid. He says they're too stupid. He's literally telling people what he thinks of them. And so this individual says, um, I totally agree not to agree with you. I will not call you any names. The world needs peace, not hatred. Take care of yourself. If he was just a scam artist, you would not bother to use one of his videos to criticize him. How... how how does that logic work? If he was a scam artist, I wouldn't have bothered to use one of his videos to criticize him. So how can you show proof of a scam if you don't show the scam? That's crazy. Do you care for the human condition? Well, of course I do. That's why I posted the video. <laughs> Since we live in an inverted reality, I'm not surprised by your comment. MKC is the eye-opener with deep knowledge. Money is not everything. Our freedom. Yeah, okay. Money may not be everything to you, but I will say one thing about Mark Lord, Case K. Sean Christopher, is he knows how to make money off of the ignorance of people. And it's your choice if you choose to contract with that guy. Everything is a choice. And by the way, folks, I didn't do any name calling or anything. The most I did was, the closest I guess I came to it was saying that she was a follower of Mark, lowercase k. But I, of course, never called any names or anything like that. And they chose to come onto the platform. And so they're going to get responses from me. And I'm pretty direct and to the point, but I definitely don't call people names. 
and me calling Mark Rashawn Christopher a scam is not name calling because there's evidence behind it. It's not like just me saying, oh, this guy's an idiot or that guy's a, a jerk or. No. There's proof. All right. I have proven that this guy doesn't know correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Therefore, he's a scam because he claims to teach it, but he doesn't. Scam. So I hope whoever this individual is, uh, you know, it did. It ended on a good note. You know, she wasn't didn't get angry or anything like that, which is cool. It's very cool. Uh, so hopefully, maybe she'll look into the grammar and then she will realize <laughs> what a scam Mark actually is. Next comment comes from Property Geek and they say, Sorry for the late reply. I will watch this video again because I don't really remember what it was about exactly. What I was trying to convey apart from your library of YouTube videos, there is no correct styles manual or set standard for correct sentence structure. That is not true. Um, I have a correct styles manual. And there are set standards for correct sentence structure. You have to learn it, though. Getting closure on the grammar is the set standard. That is the set standard. The way you see me doing things is the standard for correct sentence structure. Being that you don't have closure on the grammar, I can understand why you would say such things. But I'm telling you that because I have closure on the grammar, there's the standard. The standard is correct sentence structure closure. That's the standard. And the styles manual is up to you. You would utilize that closure and those correct sentence structure mechanics to create your styles manual. That's how it works. If I am cognizant of what you are teaching, it is only when a large group of people can all agree what is the correct method that a manual will be worth publishing for the specific purpose of communication regards written contracts. Uh, no. I didn't say that. Although it is true that that can happen, that if you get together with a community of people and you all agree on this is what we're going to use for our contracts, then that would apply to that group of people. And anybody who comes into that group of people would necessarily have to agree to those terms and conditions, those styles manuals. But that doesn't apply to everything. All right. If I come walking up to that group of people and I see mistakes in their styles manual or I don't agree with it, either we're going to come to a compromise so we can contract or I'm just not going to contract with them. That's how it works. Is i.e. the fiction babble version along with the written translation of quantum grammar. Uh, I mean, for the balance of the honor and the grace, yeah. It would be prudent to translate your correct sentence structure into plain simple English so there is no misunderstanding. Harry Knoxville sent a donation gift, which I'm super super thankful for anyone who would do this because folks I've literally invested thousands of hours in these 900 or so free videos on YouTube what you put in is what you get out and I'm really thankful when someone takes the time to actually show something actually put something back in to the channel like Harry Knoxville. I appreciate that. And anyone else who does it. I mean, I know times are tough these days. And every little bit helps. But it really shows me the psychology of the individual who does that. It means they are cognizant of rule one, rule equal. And they're appreciative. And I'm appreciative. So thank you very much, Harry Knoxville. I know who you are. Next couple comments, uh, Epic Light says, Greetings, Jason. In the preamble, what is justification and closure for the capitalization of the words order, union, justice, tranquility, welfare, liberty, and posterity? Um, I don't have that answer because I'm not the author of the preamble. 
you'd have to ask the person who wrote it, the author or authors. I'm just syntaxing it because closure has not been given to those words and that sentence. I have given, I had to commandeer the vessel uh, to avoid any shipwrecks and I bank the syntax values. But as for why it's written the way it's written, you'd have to ask the author. Thank you for the membership, by the way. And then April says, great video. Love the parsing syntax. Thank you. Would love to see a part two to this video on how to put that into a correct sentence structure. Thank you again. I absolutely love learning and you always pick up a tidbit. Well, I'm glad that you found value in this video here. Uh, as far as a part two to the video, you won't be seeing it because, first of all, I don't agree with what the preamble says and that's not motivation for me to try and syntax, or I mean to try to translate that into a correct sentence structure because, to me, it's useless word salad. What's being said there can be said much simpler, in my view, and there's, you know, and I don't agree with what it says, especially when it comes to the word liberty because liberty is basically an authoritarian terminology from an authoritarian construct people will talk about freedom and liberty liberty is not freedom not really liberty is just permission to leave a vessel but you have to come back it's like people that are on a on a on a boat or something like merchant marines or whatever whoever it is or the navy they're on board a boat and they get permission to go ashore for the weekend they're at liberty to go on shore for the weekend but they have to be back by six o'clock monday morning so liberty is i don't think it's what people think it is but that's why i wouldn't do it but you're more than welcome to do it if, if you feel you want to if you find value in that there are plenty of definitely plenty of other videos on this channel that that do that that translate plain English sentences into correct sentence structure but that definitely won't be one of them cuz as a tutor I really don't see any value in me doing that because of how much word salad is there Next comment comes from Property Geek and they say thank you for giving me more closure Although I never seem to get full closure, being a professional pinball, LOL, crash into a little bit of everything and never in one place long enough to focus with the required concentration. A great analogy you made some time ago that I can recognize in myself. Well, if you say it, I have no reason to doubt you, Property Geek. But what I will say is that shows me humility and... Uh, you know, that's an admirable quality to cultivate in oneself and being honest with oneself. I have a question regards a vowel in front of a consonant being no contract word. I'm thinking of the words escape and estuary as they are pronounced like, are they, as they are pronounced eh, like egg, and not e as in eek or easy. Or are they all no contract words? Any word. With a vowel at the beginning of the word, followed by a consonant, is no contract. How it sounds has no bearing on whether it's contract or no contract. I repeat, any word that starts with a vowel followed by a consonant is no contract. And a pleasant final round of comments. This one from Paul Webb. And they say, you're an arrogant P-R-I-C-K. Who the F do you think you are? You and information you present irrelevant and of no consequence. You're hideous, pathetic little man. <laughs> How does any of the information you present improve the lives of the people who receive it? How does humanity benefit? Complete waste of time and space. Wow. Somebody diarrhea in that guy's Cheerios. Name calling. Cussing. 
information I present is irrelevant and of no consequence. Hideous, pathetic little man. Bro, I'm six foot over 200 pounds. I, I mean, I don't know if that qualifies me as a big man, but I, I don't think I'm a little man. Thankfully, I don't participate with the concept of time or wasted time. Everything to me is a learning experience. So my coolie on a back to them was, you okay? Need a Kleenex or something? <laughs> and then they say, you can keep your Kleenex to wipe your mouth after all the SHIT that comes out of it. I have my own thanks. And only fools buy name brand products. Fool. <laughs> so they said, uh, I have my own thanks. And because they said, thank you, I said, you're welcome. And that's that. I mean, I don't know what, I tried to go back to see why they reacted that way, but I didn't really see anything. So whoever that is really got triggered by something I said. They really got upset. And this, of course, folks, is part of the psychology of correct sentence structure. They took it personally, apparently. Whatever it is that I said, whether it was directed towards them or not, they took it personally and got all upset and up in their feelings and things like that. And that's how they reacted. Again, you know, the, the keyboard warrior type of thing, uh, which is fine. I mean, that's just part of being on the Internet, I guess. And uh, an individual like this, probably does not possess the neurological pathways to learn and get closure on correct sentence structure. Not especially if they're going to react like this. Like, boom, right off the bat, they just snapped into this totally, uh, in my view, repugnant type of personality. But, you know, all shapes and sizes. Thanks for watching, folks. Hope you were entertained. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I offer several choices. The first one, and the easiest one, is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. The second option, if you want to see new content, is to click the Join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching, click the join button and you will see two tiers of membership. If you choose the second tier, the loyalist contributor tier, and you join that for a monthly support donation, you'll get new content, fresh content, exclusive content not available to the public every month. But keep in mind, there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study. And the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. And this is for the serious students only. And apply for a correct grammar workshop. But please include your correct name when contacting me. And I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation. And you and I will have a conversation. You can ask me whatever you want. I'll answer your questions. I'll do the same with you. I'll ask you questions and we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you.